Mnemonics can be an incredibly powerful tool for learning foreign languages, but creating them can be tricky, especially if you're just getting started learning how to create mnemonics. So today I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to generate ideas for mnemonics when learning foreign languages. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are within ChatGPT. We're just in the free version of ChatGPT, and I'm going to paste in here a prompt with 10 words in Spanish that I want to create mnemonics for. So here we have the prompt, create mnemonics for the following words in Spanish. And let's just see what, what this gives us. Okay, so it's helpfully given us translations of these words, but uh, the mnemonics are terrible. So la fruta, friendly rabbits usually taste apples. Okay, so what it's done is it's created a sentence out of the spelling of these words. So this is, this is not useful at all. So what we need to do is we need to craft a prompt that will actually teach ChatGPT the kinds of uh, rules to follow when creating mnemonics. And this is really good because this, this helps us understand what makes a good mnemonic versus what makes a bad mnemonic. These are not useful for our purposes in learning these words. So we need to understand what is a, a mnemonic for learning a foreign language word and what are the components of that that make it successful. So I've now pasted in here a new prompt with more detail explaining what a mnemonic is, particularly a visual mnemonic for learning foreign language vocabulary. And then I've uh, put the list of words at the end as, as well. So I'm just going to read what this prompt says so that you can understand the, the rules that we're, we're trying to follow here in creating mnemonics. Mnemonics are easy to remember images that stand in the place of new information that is difficult to remember. When learning a foreign language, we can use mnemonics to help us remember new vocabulary and content. Mnemonics must follow certain rules. 1. They must be things. 2. They must be visual and vivid in nature. 3. They may use either the spelling of the foreign language word or the sound of that word as the basis of an association. Let me provide some examples. The French word for one is un. For this, we can use the spelling and think of the United Nations as a mnemonic. The Arabic word for dog is kelb. We can use kelp as a mnemonic based on the sound. The Italian word for raspberry is lampone. We can use a lamppost as a mnemonic for this Italian word. Based on these parameters, please create three mnemonic ideas for each of the following words in Spanish. Okay, I'm going to say, just based on my own experience here, um, please use the sound of the following words. The sounds of the following words as the basis to create three mnemonic ideas for each of the following words in Spanish. Let's see what happens. Okay, so let's have a look at these mnemonics. La fruta, which just means fruit. So flute, uh, imagine playful flute playing a tune with various fruits as musical notes. Hmm, not so great. Fruta fiesta, visualize a vibrant and lively fiesta where fruits are dancing and celebrating. Okay, uh, this is not, this one's not too far from the English. So let's, let's go to la manzana, which means apple. Munch an apple. Imagine a little character munching on a juicy apple with delight. Hmm. Man zooming apple. Picture a miniature man zooming around on a tiny apple like a whimsical ride. Maple apple. Visualize a maple leaf shaped like an apple hanging from a tree. Okay, so this is not so great. So now I'm here in the plus version of ChatGPT, which you do have to pay for, so that I can use ChatGPT4, which is a much more powerful language model. And I'm going to paste the same prompt in here and see what happens. Okay, let's look at these examples. Now, first of all, I can see that even though I asked for three mnemonic ideas for each of the following words, it only gave me one. So I can uh, correct that in just a moment, but let's look at what we got so far. La fruta, fruit loops. That works, that's much better. La manzana, mansion. Visualize a giant apple-shaped mansion. I like that. La naranja, Narnia. Picture the wardrobe from Narnia made of bright oranges. I like that. El plátano, plain toe. Visualize a plane that has bananas for wings. Uh, not so great. 
Okay, so some of these are okay, some of these are not so great, but the, the ones that are okay are much better than what we got before with ChatGPT3. Now let me just correct this and say, um, in my prompt, Okay, so now we have three mnemonic ideas for each word. Some of these are really good. Some of them are not so good, but that's okay. I mean, the idea here is just to generate ideas, particularly when you're getting stuck. If you can't think of something and you need ideas, you can use this kind of prompt to help create ideas, and maybe one of them will work. And if they don't work, you can say, give me more ideas for la manzana or something like that. You can go through and ask it for, for more ideas. So the point here is to help unload some of that burden of having to create mnemonics, that, that, uh, that challenge when you're getting stuck creatively. And here you can use ChatGPT to help make the process of creating mnemonics easier and less of a burden, especially when you're getting started and you need to see lots of ideas, lots of examples and uh, you might be getting stuck often. So this is just a tool that you can use to help you, not just with language learning, but if you're using mnemonics to help remember other information or content. And uh, just remember that it's all about how you frame the prompt, how you uh, give the instructions. And unfortunately, ChatGPT4 is much better at doing this than ChatGPT3. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel and head over to linguisticator.com to see all our courses in memory and foreign languages.